We are called the Marine Corps of St. Pius X. We remain until our last breath the, the children, the sons of St. Pius X. So I'm always very uh, happy to uh, go around, you know, uh, in French we say uh, faire la tournée des popotes, that is you go around and then you taste the pot in uh, every place, uh, so um, I can uh, never be uh, everywhere, but this, this year it, it so happens that I'm covering uh, England. It was at the request of Bishop Balini, so Bishop Balini asked me uh, to cover for you this uh, weekend because I, I wanted to thank him for coming and helping uh, us out in, uh, in Asia. And then um, when I go to France, I will visit uh, all the other priests of the resistance in France, and Bishop Faure, and the Dominicans, Father Solnave, Father Piver, and um, perhaps Father Pico, I don't know. And uh, my own brother is in Morgon, so I will uh, ask Morgon, please wake up. So, um, so it's important to keep the bond between um, uh, ourselves. Perhaps next time I come to Europe, I'll visit uh, Archbishop Vigano, hopefully, uh, and pay my respects to him and uh, congratulate him for his courage and uh, being speaking loud, you know, bishing around, doing what a bishop does. And it's, um, you could say it's a major breakthrough this year that, uh, that's the best news of the year uh, as far as we are concerned. This is what we are praying for. This is how the crisis will end, by the return to tradition. We always talked about the return to tradition. And so um, in uh, Archbishop Vigano, we have what we, what we desire. We lament the fact that the society of St. Pajetan does not rejoice with us. They should rejoice uh, at the return to tradition of a Novus Ordo bishop uh, who is condemning in the strongest term Freemasonry and Vatican II and, and uh, liberalism, the, uh, the new mass, the new code, everything is saying the traditional bravery the, is, um, is restored the liturgy entirely, is wearing the habit and is active, is bringing priests over uh, to tradition. He uh, is asking Strickland to stand, to stay, and take care of his flock in Texas. Well, Strickland won't listen, you know, he still says a new mass. Strickland is a nice man, but Strickland is missing the Vigano uh, dimension. Because what we do, we've been thrown out to the desert because we want to uh, de destroy Carthage. Carthage must be uh, destroyed. The um, Council of Vatican II, that's our goal, must be uh, anathematized, declared as a uh, heretical, as a, as a um, conciliable, um, I would say that in English. Um, I don't remember the expression. An abusive council, which is uh, not, ta not just tainted with heresy, but heretical. The, um, you have at least two documents in Vatican II that are utterly heretical. It's Nostra Aetate on religious liberty, which is word for word a contradiction in terms with the syllabus, Pius IX, which is infallible, and uh, Nostra Aetate. Now, maybe you haven't read Vatican II. Now it's time to read Vatican II. Don't read the whole thing. Just read Nostra Aetate. It's only six pages. You Google Nostra Aetate, you read those six pages. And that's enough for you to see that it is heretical. That, uh, that it needs to be utterly uh, rejected. So in, um, in Archbishop Vigano, we have what we desire. That's at this strategic level, you may say. At the tactical level, uh, we uh, organize missions everywhere. And then we uh, answer the calls. 
uh, even if they are distant. So in the Philippines has 7,000 islands and then we have 40 groups. Most of them are small, are not b a bit smaller than even than this, uh, this group of, of yours. You know? So most of us, uh, of them uh, are small, you know. But for instance, in Cebu alone, we have three chapels in, um, in, uh, in Cebu. So currently we are building in the third chapel over there in the south side of Cebu. On the, uh, and this is where Magellan arrived. Magellan's ship, you know, did, uh, went around the world and then they, uh, they were, the sailors were dying for lack of vitamins. It was a very long crossing of the Pacific Ocean and they, they arrived here and then they entered and then they landed uh, in uh, Lapu Lapu where we have built a church there. So when the plane takes off, we can see the, on the starboard side, there is the, uh, our little church that we have built there on the very island where he landed and where he was killed by uh, Lapu Lapu, the uh, local chief. So, so Cebu is the, our main base, and it's there that the seminary is located. And from there, because it's a large city, it connects very well with uh, what is called the Visaya, the group of group of island in the center, and this very large island, island of Mindanao. So all these places are very accessible from Cebu. So on Friday afternoon or Saturday morning, we uh, leave the mountain where the seminary is located. And then we go uh, and do the missions. Uh, so just across in Bohol, we have three or four missions in Bohol. And then a new priest who is from the island of Panay, with capital of Iloilo, has launched a, a group in Iloilo, and three groups in Negros, and two new groups in South Cebu, on the other side of Cebu, there. Then we got three groups here, in uh, Leyte. There's our best group is in Kamigin Island here, very near Bohol, very majestic volcano and a crazy governor. You know, uh, he was going at night, uh, he was going at, he's a Freemason, he was going at night and trying to catch people by surprise, not wearing the mask or uh, not obeying the curfew. And then he still, um, he loves the, uh, the codes you have to apply before uh, quarantine and uh, and everything. He, he loved all, all this. He was a very crazy governor uh, of a small island, you know, Romualdo, that's his name. And uh, then in Mindanao proper, we have eight groups, one in Zamboanga, one a little bit north near Ipil. There's a village, villagers in between, we don't know about them. I did lots of marriages there, but I don't know if it will uh, be followed up. Then uh, Alicia, uh, Concepcion, and then uh, Cagay and De Oro. Here we built a church in El Salvador. And in Bukidnon, in the mountain there, very beautiful area, there are three missions. And then there's a group in Davao, where the uh, uh, society also has a priory. So these are all the groups in, uh, in Mindanao. And then the Father John takes care, he's a Camelite, has very tiny groups in the island of Luzon. So uh, very, still very small, very nascent. We, um, and may God change the situation sooner than later. And so in the, the problem that we have, major problem in the Philippines we have now is uh, lack of vocation. We had some priestly vocation, well, three vocations that came to maturity, they became priests. But uh, the youth is, um, is very uh, fragile because of the uh, abuse of the cell phones. And uh, Philippine um, parents don't know how to put limits on their children in that regard. So it's, it is a big problem. And, uh, and so um, uh, when they arrive at the difficult years of teenage, and, uh, so they usually fall into those traps. So we don't have many Philippine vocations. So we try to run boys camps and to organize a few things in order to uh, get the vocations that we are missing now in the Philippines. But 
surprisingly, as we don't get nothing in the Philippines from Australia, we get a Filipino family. So it's Philippine blood from Luzon. And uh, they are doing the right thing with their children. They have seven wonderful children whose mind hasn't been demolished by the uh, electronic cage. It's called the, we call it the, the cage, the electronic cage. So their children are normal children. And, um, and, and uh, the three boys, three of their boys want to enter into the seminary. And two of their girls want to enter religious life as well. So I hope we get more normal families like that to um, finish the crisis of the church. But because they are Australian citizens, they will, uh, these, um, these candidates will uh, help, uh, help out in Australia. Uh, they, they are sent by Father MacDonald, from, and so they come from Brisbane. So beside the Philippines, we fly to uh, Korea, Japan, and Malaysia. And um, Korea and Japan are weak missions. They are uh, struggling because I don't speak Korean, nor do I speak uh, Japanese. And the society is prevalent over us in those, uh, in those areas. But that will change with the coming of Andrew Kim, who is a seminarian at uh, Bishop Balini. So in uh, two and a half years, he will eventually uh, relieve me of the responsibility of Korea and Japan. And we'll also take over Malaysia. Malaysia, on the contrary, we are strong. The, the, all the original um, parish from the SSPX has uh, passed on to the uh, resistance with the help of uh, our beloved cowboy, uh, Father Summers. Father Summers uh, gave them an offer that they had to refuse. And uh, so they turned down the offer. The, they, basically, they were told to give everything away, the entire moral person and the whole committee, or the key of the place, everything. And, and they, says, they said no, and because they were already concerned about what was going on in the society and everything. And so they were issued sacramental blackmail because it was during COVID. So they, uh, they were hoping that we would not be able to come and give them the sacraments. And as they issued the blackmail, then the restrictions were begun to be uh, lifted and we were able to come. And so that's, uh, so, um, so in the end, we have kept the premises that were used by the SSPX uh, in uh, Petaling Jaya, in Kuala Lumpur. And there are two small missions, one in Penang, uh, which was a very famous city in those times, in colonial times, and Malacca, which was also the uh, main harbor of the Portuguese empire in the area where San Francis made many miracles and where San Francis was uh, unjustly detained by a uh, governor Alvaro and that, that, that eventually led to his eventual death in the island of San Sian. So Malacca, it's place of history. So we have a very tiny group in Malacca, not so tiny in uh, Penang and, uh, and, uh, and an and then a chapel bigger than, than your group, something bigger, but 60 people in Kuala Lumpur proper. So, and they are very friendly with uh, Bishop Morgan. So Bishop Morgan will go there in uh, next April. And in January, this is the place where we will hold our priest meeting. So every year, uh, canonically, you, you, you must have a priest retreat. The priest must have one week to recharge their spiritual batteries. And then every year also it's mandatory, it's canonical, and then there must be a, a priest doctrinal meeting. And so we discuss all the issues and everything. And then uh, as I go around Europe, then uh, whatever I see, I tell them so that they know the situation uh, everywhere. And then whatever issues are raised, uh, you know, we discuss. Uh, among ourselves, and it really helps the cohesion of the team of priests in Asia, because in Europe, the, um, you know, the concentration of priests is already much bigger. You know, you've got nine priests here on the British Isles, 
And then you got uh, across the channel, you got uh, all the continentals, and they are already quite something. And then, uh, and then now there is Archbishop Vigano in Italy. So, but we in Asia, we are quite isolated. So throughout the year, we are um, quite isolated, you know. But eventually, this isolation will be remedied by by new soldiers joining, either via the seminary or via priests joining the, the resistance. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and then and, um, Bishop Williamson meets him regularly. Yeah. So um, after the Church of Sardis, our time, you know, the Church of Sardis, the attack at night in the rear, the the, the citadel is taken by Cyrus by uh, in the night, kind of treacherously. After the treacherous, treacherousness of liberalism and then the long decay of the Church of Sardis will come the Church of Philadelphia. It's, we are guessing, it's Bishop Williamson's guess, I think he's right, that uh, we are still in Church of Sardis. As long as things are dark and, and getting worse, we are on a Sardis uh, period. But then there will be a great period of reunification and triumph. So it's the Church of Philadelphia, the, we, which means, Adelphoi means brother, the love of brothers. After uh, chastisement, World War Three, you name it, uh, this is what happens. And Our Lady has promised that Russia would convert. So you can picture yourself that the Catholic Church will become uh, uh, resplendent uh, after this. Just like you know, the Church was in big trouble in the time of Martin Luther. See, the the books of Luther were the number one book sold in Germany for more than a century. You had to wait more than a century until Luther became number two of sales. And uh, that's, that was the impact of Luther in, uh, in Germany. But the reform of the Council of Trent was successful, and the Catholic Church was never so triumphant as after the Council of Trent. So each time the, the devil strikes and hurts the church and crucifies the mystical body of Christ, then the resurrection, you know, far outpaces and exceeds the, uh, the abundance of sin. So where sin abounds, grace overabounds. Yeah. That's why the Antichrist has to come afterwards so that he is succeeded with the final triumph, the total crushing triumph of our Lord. And that will be the permanent triumph of the Catholic Church. What we see right now with the Vigano, I, I say it's, it's a crack in the dam. You know. It's a crack in the dam, and um, Francis is very angry, he's, he's upset. You know, he can't hold his, uh, his anger when he thinks about us. You know. So he makes uh, offensive declarations regularly, you know, and he calls us um, many uh, names of birds. You know. But what can he do? It's, it's not going to stop. Because they, they have not been able to be consistent. Because the, the Jacobin, the radicals, want to smash tradition, like Paul VI. Wants to smash, forbid, say uh, that this new mass is, uh, is illegal and everything. Those are the radicals. But you always have the, the others, the conservative, the Rats Ratzingerians or Voschtilians. They always say, no, if you forbid them, you make a forbidden fruit, and uh, you're gonna, you are making it tempting, and look, they're going to proceed anyways, and then go, they're going to run their operation outside of our control. So if we need to control them, we need to hijack them by being nice to them, getting from them the admission that Vatican II is okay, and that the new mass is of equal value. And, uh, and, and allowing them to go according to their sensibilities. To which the radical reply, no, because if you allow them to say the, uh, the Latin Mass, they will see the principles that are behind this form of worship. And they will see, those who are honest will see the contradiction. You know. So Monsignor Vac, in this Institute of Christ the King and the others, they don't want to see the contradiction. But 
honest priests, like the two priests who have just joined us in Australia, see the contradiction. Or Vigano sees that there is an utter contradiction between the two. And so they reject the Novus Ordo. And this is what Francis points to. He says, look, at, look they, are, they are rejecting us. They are rejecting Vatican II. And, but the others, they are right also. If you, may, if you forbid and then if you squash, you're also contradicting your notion of religious liberty, your liberalism. You are not so nice, actually. You say you want to welcome everybody, embrace everybody, reject no one and everything, be nicey nicey, and then, uh, and then you'll be a look at uh, what you're doing. So there is an inside contradiction which is taking place. So right now we are in the return of the Jacobines, and they are the open murderers of souls. Yeah. But he's, he's such a heretic, Francis is such a heretic, that when he tells you don't do it, then you know it's, uh, it's uh, according to the faith to do the opposite of what he says. So he's pointing much against his will. He's pointing in the right direction. And the things are, are very clear. People can know very clearly that there is a crisis in the church. Because on the bottle it's written arsenic in, in large characters. You know, which was in the past, it, you know, it was written whiskey, and then you had a little uh, character, you know, may contain uh, drops of arsenic. You know. <laughs> that was in the past. But with Francis, things are so clear. So um, I want to be grateful to him for sending more priests and, uh, and, and making things very clear. So that's the situation. So I, we talked about the Philippines um, and the uh, Japan, Korea, and Malaysia. And then there, is, there was poor Father MacDonald all alone holding the missions in Australia, embarked to enter Australia. They say, I cannot justify my uh, status as a tourist. Yeah. So uh, they let the French, all the other French, they enter, no problem. You know. And they have a status as a tourist, as a visitor, so they, they don't let me in. So, uh, and then New Zealand says, Australia is not letting you in, so we don't let you in. You know, so I'm also barred from, uh, so from uh, New Zealand. So On what ground? you cannot justify your status as a tourist. That's what they say. And uh, this uh, this decision is uh, non. You cannot contest that decision. I cannot call a lawyer or uh, you know ask an immigration lawyer. Uh, so I'm bad, you know. So, so Bishop Williamson says it's because of the RSPs. Hmm? Well, uh, I made it to the New York Times thanks to Bishop Balini. <laughs> no, to the London Times. London Times. So perhaps. Perhaps. I wouldn't be surprised. So as a revenge, I pray for Australia very much. I ask everybody to pray. And, then, um, and uh, I don't say that my prayers are that, that strong, but it's a relief to us to have now two more priests, uh, good priests. And then they will attend the priest meeting in uh, Kuala Lumpur and will explain uh, their journey towards tradition. Yeah. So, and it's good that we, uh, we are together on a local basis. Because when a problem arises, we can uh, help each other. When a marriage case arises, we can set up a, a, a tribunal and deal with the cases in due time. And then, then we can fulfill the, the canonical uh, details. And then also we need, we need to have layers of accountability. So I have the Bishop Morgan will come, and like Bishop Balini, and then they look into uh, the files of the seminary, the canonical files uh, of the seminarians. Bishop Balini wants me to uh, be very, uh, to have proper forms for the uh, canonical files. Uh, and, um, and then Bishop Morgan will come and make uh, me another remark about this or that, things that have to be adjusted. So 
I have to give an account. It's important. So we don't, we don't have ordinary jurisdiction. We have supply jurisdiction. But that, that's why we should be more careful uh, to avoid being on our own, to avoid doing our own will, or worst, like the SSPX, to behave as if we had an ordinary jurisdiction, you know, to behave as, as if we were the law. We are not the law. We, we can make mistakes, and we need to be accountable. So I like the idea that um, the bishops come and visit and look into us and, uh, and uh, be happy or be unhappy uh, at what they see. That's the way it should be. Um, in the old days, the bishops used to go around the Yes. Yes. There has to be visitation. Yeah. Because also when a priest is sick, when a priest is tired, when he's depressed, the other priests need to notice, you know, so we can bring reinforcements, say some prayers for him or whatever. So um, we need to support uh, one another. <coughs> hmm? So Bishop Balini just visited. He just visited. So he did uh, Cebu, Cebu, Bohol, Leiti, Kamigin, and Mindanao. So that's... Uh, Yes? Sorry to go back to Bishop Vigano again. Yes. Um, did you understand correctly that he's actually a bishop of the resistance? Yes. So has he made some sort of declaration? Or Doesn't need to. He needs to agree with our position. That's all he needs. So how, do we, how are we to know that he actually agrees with our position and doesn't hold with the SSPX? Or? What he writes. Okay. Uh, so the Dominicans in Avoyer really praise what he's saying and... Uh, okay. Bishop uh, Williamson also prays, is what he says, and he stand. Yeah. And then we read what he says. That's pretty much the same thing as we say, that Pope Francis is a heretic. He calls him Bergoglio, but he's not a sede vacantist either. But, uh, but he calls a spade a spade, a heretic a heretic. If you are a heretic, you must be fought until you return to tradition. So he fights the conciliar church. He hates the new mass. He condemns Vatican II. What else do we want? I presume he used to say the new right at some point. Thanks to Francis, his eyes opened. It's a, Mac Macaric, it's a Macaric scandal in, uh, in the US. When he was papal nuncio, there was a cover-up for pedophilia. And that gave him a shock, you know. He realized that they were after the Catholic, they wanted to destroy the Catholic Church. They, he saw a willful intent to destroy the Catholic Church. And so he realized that Vatican II is also the self-demolition of the Church. The new mass is also the demolition of the Church. It's, and the, the new liter everything else. So things fell into their place. And then he realized that he was very late in the fight. And then, so he's trying to catch up by being as loud as he can. Louder than Bishop Williamson even now. Well, he, he's done the necessary, that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, the necessary has been done. Yeah, so... And then he uh, spreads, he uses his weight. Yeah, because Bishop Williamson is very nice, we like him very much. But he has, he has the weight that corresponds uh, to our circles. Whereas Vigano, it's, we are flanking the enemy with, uh, with Vigano. Like, I wish I could know more Bishop Stobniki in Poland. He has a team of priests in Poland. There is even a, a priest in Ukraine, you know, that dying country of Ukraine. Uh, so there is a priest even of the resistance over there. And so, so other um, kingdoms are coming to be. And then we had, a few years ago, there was nothing in Africa, and now we have... Uh, three and soon four priests in Nigeria. They want to send their seminarians to Cebu. So pray that they get the visa to go to Cebu and attend a class in Cebu. So my main job is to give the classes. The, the, the whole rest is vacation to me. And especially here in England, only one mass. You know. 
an air conditioning inside, outside of the house. So, not, not, not a drop of sweat, nothing. And then a nice hotel last night, and so, but it's extremely tiring. I, I give four periods per day. Um, uh, so, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Periods for classes. Classes, because you, you gotta give the basic canonical classes. And, uh, so, I'm a, uh, well, there is what I know for sure. Two Australians, Filipino Australians, and uh, who is the other one? And perhaps a Fijian. Now the, the perhaps is the one from Fiji, two from Nigeria. Yeah. Ah yes, for sure, two Australians and one Turk yeah. from Turkey. Yes. So those are coming for sure. The three uh, that I don't know for sure are the two Nigerians. That depends on their getting the visa. So the Father Sh uh, Shigbata wants them to do their studies in Cebu. They tried to send him them first to Don Tomas Aquinas, but they, they could not learn Portuguese. Portuguese is the medium. So it didn't work. So they tried to board the plane, and then they were denied boarding in uh, Los Angeles. They were stuck at the airport for one week. Uh, no shower, nothing, uh, stuck in the airport. It was, they were miserable. Father McDonald bailed them out, paid them, pay them their ticket back to Nigeria. But one of the two dropped out of the race. So he, uh, he gave up, you know, it's too hard for him. That's good, it's good news, because better if we find out early than later. Yeah. And, and then the, the other one also said uh, that he had no vocation. Then the only one remains saying, Father, I want to be a priest, I want to fight, I want to be a priest, and that's very good. And then another one from Nigeria proper is also applying to enter the seminar. Those are the two Nigerians. And then the last one, uh, hypothetical, is from Fiji Islands. Yeah, Fiji. So six, if all goes well, three otherwise. Yeah. And in the Philippines, I had to throw out many s candidates because of effeminacy, lots of them, yeah, so, uh, yes? You, you said that you built churches? Huh? You built churches? Build, oh, yes, so there is construction going on in um, in Camotes Island, it's, it's one of the islands I forgot to mention. So where did you decide to build a church? Because we often think it would be lovely to have a church. Yes. Well, we, we, Father John Mark set up a team of builders. We give them uh, sketches and plans, and then they buy the materials and they build. So you build first, and then you ask questions later. <laughs> so we are building a church in Camotes right now. Its construction is ongoing I, in uh, the seminary. So we are building an iron temporary church because we don't own the place, so we cannot make it permanent. But we want to make it big and temporary. And when the next typhoon comes, the walls will be blown off. The roof will fly away. We saw, after the typhoon, we saw our roof across the valley. But they, had, they did ask the permission. Father, can we take the roof? In your and so we saw uh, the, the roof of the tower acro uh, uh, ac across the valley. And you can see it. The neighbors have uh, our roofs. And, uh, so Mm -hmm. but is it cheaper in, you know, in relation it's a lot cheaper, yes. Yeah. yeah. One to ten ratio, I would say. It was bamboo. It was a bamboo palace. I think we had it too good. Yeah, bamboo. It had a capacity for 20 people. So, um, it was, we were too comfortable, I would say. Now it's going to be iron. Iron beams with uh, bars in between and then a uh, St. Andrew's cross uh, across the nave the, the, and the side nave. So the, the typhoon winds will not defeat the structure. Then the skin will uh, peel off, and, but then uh, you put it again. Because what I've noticed everywhere in the Philippines that 
one or two months after the typhoon has passed, all the houses are back to normal. <laughs> so it's, the houses are like, they, they have a hat. So when the typhoon comes, hats off, and the hat gets back on, and life goes on. So the walls remain, or, and then life goes on. That's the Philippine way. Yeah. So we're going to do the same uh, that way. And then where else are we? We built a church in El Salvador, in Camigin. In Camigin, it would be a nice Romanesque style bell tower above the tree line, which is very nice. And Father Elias is going to build a church in Iloilo, in his native town, because he owns the place. He has a lot downtown Iloilo, very accessible. So he's going to build a. First, he builds a temporary chapel. If the group is there and grows, then he will do more serious construction. And then we're going to start construction in Pardo, South Cebu, um, uh, because we have a, we've been able to buy for cheap a plot of 1.6 million pesos, which is, uh, which is about uh, 20,000, uh, maybe 25,000 pounds, the plot. That's a very good price. So I immediately jumped on the offer, and we uh, bought that plot. So it's oblong. It's 24 meters by 6 meters. Yeah. So it's a bit oblong, a bit, a bit too narrow, but that will do for the southern side of Cebu. What is the primary religion? Catholicism. Catholicism. Catholicism, it's a Catholic nation. Because they are an island, so the, uh, the communist or the uh, Buddhist could not come and... Uh, the Dutch tried to come and invade. They were miraculously repulsed by Our Lady uh, of La Naval. It was a miracle. The, the Spanish had three relics with old cannons to oppose them. And the, the Dutch couldn't fire on the Spanish, and the Spanish each time were... Um, scoring the bullseye, and then, and then the Dutch turn around and left. In the south, the Muslims tried to attack the mission. The Jesuits bu built forts in Zamboanga, and then uh, the Muslim fleet turned, uh, turned around and fled. And the English were never interested into the, uh, the Philippines, because there was those, the money was in the spice trade, so the English interfered with the Dutch Empire further south. <coughs> so Philippines were spared, but they were not spared uh, by the Americans. The Americans arrived, and then the Americans brought all the Protestant sects, so that now a third of the Filipinos are Protestants. They brought all the sects, and they, including Iglesia de Cristo, which has this symbol, you know, by the way. And that's their, that's their sim a symbol like that. You know. On a, and a secret hierarchy, you name it, just like the Mormons. The Mormons are also in the Philippines. It doesn't work very much. But they build their clean uh, buildings, freshly painted, a basketball court. So they have their Mormons, uh, but uh, I don't see a big following. In, um, it's more the Baptists, you know, the, the, uh, the classic born againism is working in the Philippines. The others are not doing so well. The Adventists also are there. So you get a, quite a good knowledge of Protestantism in the Philippines. And then they also started their own Philippine national churches. So for those who didn't want to become Protestant but still had to leave the Catholic Church, the Masons instituted the Filipino Independiente, the Independent Church of the Philippines. So they have the traditional mass, but they, are, uh, they were founded by a Freemason. Yes. So, and then it's a colony of the U.S. It's the CIA who decides who is going to be president. In advance, we always know in advance, father is going to be uh, Marcos. Father is going to be Duterte. Father is going to be uh, Aquino. How do you know? And then because you say that, and then all the others are saying the same. Why do you go voting in that case? So uh, the elections are decided in advance. And Marcos is a puppet of the Americans, uh, and they got something on him. He could go to jail if he doesn't do their, their bidding, so he's dependent. So it's a, it's a colony of the U.S. now, and then they are using the Philippines as a bait for China. 
They put nine bases now. They brought back the American bases. But especially the Filipinos are overrun by the U.S. culture, all the trash of the U.S. Uh, and they are lobotomized. They, they don't use fentanyl. That's the only thing I would say, which is in their favor. But all the rest is, uh, they are completely Americanized. Their middle class is rotten, just like our own middle class. Yeah. And they practice abortion, and then they, uh, it's a one-child policy in that middle class. And they are rich. So they have a very rich, their shopping malls are the biggest in the world. They have enormous palatial uh, shopping malls. So uh, they are not poor in a city. You have very rich Filipino. The uh, empire of the uh, C family that owns the SM line of shopping mall and real estate, it's about, I would say by now, it's about $30 billion empire, at least which is small compared to Elon, but it's quite a large. And then many ch rich Chinese, Chinese Filipino also own the airlines, the banks, and, and so on. Manila is absolutely huge. It takes the plane 20 minutes from south to north of Manila by plane. I was in a plane one time, we were crossing Manila, and I looked at my watch, and it took the plane 20 minutes from the south to the north of Manila. Manila is absolutely huge. And they are bringing factories and everything. And, but uh, it's ruining the spirit of the Filipinos. So the good, the good part of our faithful is more on the countryside. And then we have centers in the cities because the cities are so large. There have got to be some good people among so many people. But the situation is very bad, and, and, and the morality now is very rotten. The government officially promotes sodomy. And then in the television, they put uh, TV uh, hosts or TV uh, the, all, on the TV and the movies. It's all promoting sodomy yeah. on a vast scale. It's a government program. There is brainwashing in the schools also for that. So we have plenty of cases of our youth getting infected, being turned into gays because of the local state schools. So it's, it's pretty bad. The, the situation is, is uh, quite serious. So I think World War III is timely. Uh, stop has, it has to come to a stop. You know. Just like in Europe, you know, it has to come to a stop. It's going too far. For the first time in my country, the the uh, the newspapers are promoting bestiality. That's the first time I see that. It's too much. It's, uh, the time is so uh, the whole thing has to go down. But uh, what, what was uh, was I talking about? So I was talking about the seminary next fall. Uh, next fall we start the classes in January, end of January. We start the class. Then there's Australia, so Australia, there is a group, our largest group is in Brisbane, and then the second largest is in Melbourne, uh, and then there is Sydney, and a tiny group in uh, Streaky Bay, and New Zealand, uh, uh, yeah, New Zealand, and Perth, perhaps, by now. I don't know exactly what Father MacDonald is doing, because I, I'm not going to Australia anymore. So... He goes to Canada also, yeah, and the States, and Detroit, and yes. Do you think we're limited um, the resistance in Christ because of the fact that we're basically waiting now for three days of darkness? Do you think, you know, uh, uh, three days of darkness, it's, you cruise through it if you are in a state of grace. Yeah, I know, but the fact is that, that, that obviously you know, God is building the foundation for what is going to happen next. Mm. We are just saving the mustard seeds. We are dropping the ocean. We are, we are infinitesimal. But why should Francis care about us so much? Because he knows. He knows how dangerous we are, because we are holding a very uh, powerful thing there. Mm -hmm. 
Well, when you went to the Philippines, you said, don't breed like rabbits. So, yes. Yes. But is it compulsory now in Philippines that they have only two children? No. No, no. They are, but uh, you see, every time one of our faithful is pregnant, the doctors gang around her. Are you crazy? Another child and everything. And one of them, she was forcibly, uh, without her consent, she was uh, sterilized. They said, oh, we, uh, you had a complication. We had to do something. But what? And uh, oh, we cannot tell you. Oh, you know, it's horrible. And it's the doctors. So the doctors, and then they... They, they, they make them feel guilty. And then also the family. So their own parents still go to the SSPX mass. Their own parents were telling them, what, another child? That's too much. Stop it. You know. So the social pressure is... Uh, because the number one vice in Asia is not pride, is not lust, is not this or that. It's avarice, greed, the love of money. It's the dominant vice of Asia. Uh, under the guise of financial uh, security or uh, fatherly duty to provide studies for the children. They always say, if I have another child, how do I pay his studies? Yeah, I can pay his food and his clothing and his roofing, but how do I pay his studies always? You know? And they, they easily skip the mass because they had to go and study because they have exams. And then it's very hard to get that mentality out so it's uh but i think the problem with the electronic cage is everywhere you know and it's also a threat for us priest so i want no internet in the seminary so i answer my email on the weekends i check the war in russia you know all the happy news of the um, russia in the weekend, and I reply to my emails on the weekend and everything. But in a seminary, in a mountain, I, I said no internet. So if you want to cheat on that, well, you get only a weak signal because we are in the middle of nowhere. So, um, but technically, uh, no internet. Yeah, we are about to be finished anyways because we'll have to put away. Well, you can go if you want. No more questions. And then I'm publishing this book on, uh, on hell. And then I'm halfway through the book on heaven. Uh -huh. So it's a set of two. The, so what's coming is eternal crown. Now, it's easy to write about he hell, and it's easy to go there. But to write about heaven is a lot more difficult. Because it's like you compare a, a whole house to the trash can, the, the dustbin of the house. Now, the dustbin is... You, you can describe it uh, quite rapidly. But the, to describe the entire house is, uh, is huge because it's, it's God's final project. Uh, you know, there will come a, a kingdom that will destroy all the other kingdoms and replace them. And of this kingdom, there shall be no end. So the, the, um, the notion of heaven is absolutely huge. And then every time you ask scripture and the saints, yeah, God bless you. Yeah. Every, every time you, you ask the saints scripture about heaven, they always tell you the same. There are no words. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm tempted to write a chapter, just to put all these quotes saying there are no words. You know. It's, um, it's impossible to... We get a glimpse, you know, when we have moments of fervor or strong consolations. We get a glimpse, you know, we get a foretaste of, of heaven in, in the Holy Eucharist. But those things, even when this happened, this is very hard to describe. Yeah. So the little that I can say, and it's the same structure, so the existence of heaven, with all... And, and there, man is very prolific into creating fake heavens, false paradise, artificial paradise, sci-fi paradise, Elon Musk paradise, and then the religions, the Muslim paradise, the Nirvana, the Mormon paradise, the Amish paradise, the Protestant paradise. So you got all kinds of stupid and fake paradise. You know. 
And then when the tourists come to the Philippines, they, they hear, welcome to paradise. Paradise this and dice paradise beach, paradise restaurant. So man is, man is very good into, uh, so we, you need to debunk that and establish the, uh, what scripture says, what tradition says about heaven. And then the way to heaven, the basic way, uh, uh, and, then, and then the nature of heaven. And then we know, just like hell, we know a lot better what happens to the body, the four qualities of the risen bodies, you know, which is uh, uh, immortality or impassibility, uh, clarity, uh, agility, subtlety. So, see, Musk wants to get what he's craving for is the gift of agility. He wants to go to Mars. But it's no gift for him. It's 14 years, one way. Yeah. By the time he gets there, he's dead. So uh, if that system is going to work now, uh, and, and he's, uh, but he, he, well, they want to go to the stars. They even made a movie called Ad Astra. The, 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 the man naturally looks up to the stars, naturally. This, those are the big moai on the Easter Island. So all of us want heaven. Yeah. So, the, so the devil provides heaven. He, he, he dangles always uh, <laughs> fake, uh, fake heavens. So this, this morning I was uh, trying to find out about the Mormon paradise. The celestial paradise, the terrestrial paradise and the telestial paradise of the Mormons. And then they, they are serious about these things. So it's part of the, the, uh, the deception of the devil. And um, Bishop Williamson talks about, a lot about Disneyland. I forgot to ask him what I should write about Disneyland. He's, he's, ve he's very struck about, he's been traumatized by Disneyland <laughs> and, and, and by the sound of music, so. <laughs> So, but, uh, but the song, you can see this point, the sound of music, is, it's a fake paradise in the Swiss mountains. So it's an illusion you know, that uh, let us all be nice and the world will be better if we are all nice. Yeah. But it's, it's, it, I think uh, it will take me two years. Two years, I'm halfway. But I write it for the faithful in Asia because Spiritual reading is not available there. So um, I'm taking all the classics and I'm, I still, and I, I, uh, I, I, I put all the classics and the, the basic uh, into, that, uh, into that book. Now the, the book on heaven will be 700 pages. So it will come with a pair. So it will be built, uh, printed in Bible paper. The two books will be the same size and all the families will have the pair. So they can all have spiritual reading because uh, the classics are not available anymore. So I take the book, uh, for instance, Humility by Father Kajetan, which is wonderful that you should read. It's a great book. Then I, I compress it, I summarize it and it becomes a chapter on humility because humility is the gate of heaven. It's uh, Our Lady is the gate of heaven also because she is humility itself. So I try to compress all these things so that they have a package, a survival uh, kit. Um, and that's the goal of these two books. Yeah. Now I've written two other books before. Uh, before hell I wrote the book on the fear of the Jews. Uh, um, and then a book on uh, Contra Chicadam about the uh, city vacantism. And then my first book was in French. It's about the kingship of Christ. La Cité Oubliée, the forsaken city. And uh, I have no translator for that one. It's much easier for um, my books to get translated in French. Mm. I got a translator for that, uh, done from French to English. So I haven't found a translator for the book. La Cité Oubliée. <coughs> and then we must fight the 
intellectual anarchy, the, in, the um, electronic cage. So they, they want to destroy man's ability to think and to read. So um, a, a, a fresh book, fresh from the oven, may taste better than an old classic, perhaps. I'm trying to make all these books available in a compressed form. That's, that's my... Uh, an, an, at an affordable price, you know, for, for them. No other questions? I'll see you in two years. I'll, I'll be around in two years, I think. Yeah, yeah always uh, to keep... Uh, but there was, there must, you are, you are a mustard seed because there was nothing uh, 10 years ago. And so 10 years from now, it will be quite something else. So, yeah. Yes? A small comment, Father. Talking to a bookseller the other day, he said that he sells twice as many books of Dante's. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hell sells well. Yeah. I came with a pile of hells in I in Ireland last year, and they flew. A yeah. It sells well. It's easy. Uh, easy to write about. You know, people want to be thrilled. You know. Well, in, uh, in broad stairs. The, the bishop gave me uh, the heaven of Dante. He took me upstairs to the library. Here he is, Father. Go ahead. So uh, I, I was hoping that you would read my draft, you know, tell me his comments. On... Here it is. You manage. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much.